Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing Chainlink's cross-chain interoperability protocol. I'm going to be breaking down exactly what Chainlink's CCIP is, how Chainlink's CCIP is secured, and what are some practical use cases for Chainlink's CCIP that are going to be unlocked in the next year. You may have noticed that at the beginning of this year, Sergey Nazarov announced that CCIP will be out this year. Now, I'm very, very bullish on CCIP. I think it's going to be a whole new revenue stream for Chainlink, and I think it's going to result in the Chainlink ecosystem expanding substantially this year. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, the links are below in the description, and remember, nothing in this video is financial advice. Chainlink has been working on CCIP for multiple years now, and I do believe that it's going to be one of Chainlink's biggest services that they provide. CCIP is essentially providing cross-chain interoperability, which is going to be absolutely massive in the future. Now, if you're someone who sees a future where there's multiple different smart contract layer ones, CCIP will bring all of these layer ones together. However, even if you're someone like me who sees Ethereum as the main layer one, and multiple layer twos on top of Ethereum, well, CCIP will bring all of these layer twos together. Currently, layer twos are actually quite distant from each other and CCIP brings everything together. All the layer ones, all the layer twos, all the smart contracts, and in my opinion, this is why CCIP is going to be such a big service for Chainlink. We need to understand what problem CCIP is trying to solve. Right now, blockchains are not well connected with each other. All there is is token bridges between chains. There's a token bridge that connects chain A to chain B, however, that is all. The Avalanche ecosystem is disconnected from the Ethereum Layer 1 ecosystem. The Ethereum Layer 1 ecosystem is disconnected from Arbitrum's ecosystem. And Arbitrum's ecosystem is disconnected from Optimism's ecosystem. What CCIP is trying to do is it's trying to actually bind all of these ecosystems together and connect each other. Some of the more specific problems is that crypto currently relies on centralized and insecure bridges. For example, the bridge between Ethereum Layer 1 and Polygon is currently controlled by a multi-sig admin key, the funds in this bridge could be stolen, and this bridge is quite centralized. CCIP fixes this. CCIP also fixes fragmented liquidity between chains, and it fixes single chain state synchronization. Now, these two terms are very confusing, so let's break it down with the use of an example. Let's say that we have an application like Arva. Aave is a lending and borrowing application that is deployed to multiple chains. Aave is on both the Ethereum chain and the Avalanche chain. Now, the problem with this is that Aave looks totally different on both of these chains, and Aave is basically a separate entity. On the Ethereum chain, there is $10 billion locked in Aave, and individuals on the Ethereum chain are simply just using Aave's Ethereum version. Now, on the Avalanche chain, there is $1 billion locked in Aave, and people on AVAX are simply just using the Avalanche version. Essentially, what CCIP is going to do is it's going to make Aave a single application, and this application will be able to draw from both Ethereum and Avalanche. Essentially, the liquidity will become one. Now, Aave will have $11 billion locked in it instead of $10 billion and $1 billion, and individuals will be able to use cross-chain smart contracts to actually draw from this liquidity. Now, I realize this sounds quite confusing, but what CCIP is trying to do is it's trying to facilitate the creation of smart contracts that interact with multiple different blockchains, and this will be very useful going into the future. As we can see, this picture accurately represents what CCIP is going to look like. There will be an interface layer at the top, which we will all interact with. On this interface layer will be applications that actually use CCIP and interact with smart contracts. 
Underneath CCIP will be the Chainlink Oracle Network, which gives consensus to CCIP off-chain. We are going to now go through every single line item and we're going to start at the bottom, which is consensus and transport. Essentially, Chainlink is optimized for cross-chain infrastructure. Chainlink is basically made up by a bunch of different Oracle networks. There's roughly 700 from when I last checked. Now, these Oracle networks are securing $75 billion plus worth of value, which is absolutely massive. A few of these Oracle networks can basically start running cross-chain interoperability protocol Chainlink Oracle nodes, where they're basically going to be securing CCIP and facilitating cross-chain smart contracts. Chainlink is already fully decentralized and this works very, very well. The next reason why Chainlink is optimized is because they have large ecosystem support across a range of different blockchains, which makes this very, very easy to do. Now, the next reason for this is because Chainlink are going to be using OCR, which is Off-Chain Reporting Standard 2.0, which allows Chainlink to easily come to consensus on CCIP in a very fast and efficient way. Now, the final the final reason why Chainlink is optimized is because of the anti-fraud network. Essentially, Chainlink are going to have another committee of Chainlink Oracle nodes, and this committee could even extend to be decentralized applications that watch over CCIP. They'll report any malicious activity, and the network can be shut down in case there is malicious activity in order to protect user funds. So Chainlink is an anti-fraud network set up for CCIP, and it really does look like Chainlink is going to be the most secure network for consensus and transport, which is the first line item. The next line item is Chainlink's cross-chain interoperability protocol. Essentially, CCIP is just a messaging standard, and on top of this messaging standard sits a bunch of different things. The main thing that will be sitting on top of the messaging standard is Chainlink's cross or is Chainlink's programmable token bridge, which allows cross-chain smart contracts to actually work and occur. So, as we can see, there are cross-chain services which sit on top of the messaging standard, and the most important one here is Chainlink's programmable token bridge, as this enables most of the functionality that CCIP has right now. Chainlink's programmable token bridge contains a ton of key innovations, and this allows it to actually support cross-chain smart contracts. This is unlike any other token bridge that we have ever seen, and in my opinion, opinion, this is one of the biggest innovations that I have seen in the blockchain space for a while. What the programmable token bridge does is it allows users to send tokens to the token bridge, and it also allows them to send commands to the token bridge. So developers can actually send commands to the token bridge, and the token bridge will execute those commands. This means that tokens can actually move around in a fully automated fashion, and this basically allows cross-chain smart contracts contracts to actually occur. All one needs to do is send a set of instructions to the programmable token bridge. It will then go out and execute those instructions, which allows a bunch of different things to actually happen. The final layer is the application and the interface layer. Essentially, developers will build a bunch of applications that leverage CCIP. So a developer will make a smart contract and this smart contract will use the programmable token bridge to use a bunch of different blockchains and individuals will simply just use this application. They won't need to worry about which blockchain they are using as CCIP will take care of this for them and the developer will take care of this for them. So, the user interface layer is definitely going to be the most important layer, as this is going to be the layer that all of the users actually interact with. We are going to now break down a couple of different examples of how different protocols are actually using CCIP in order to gain a greater understanding over it. Essentially, Celsius is a company that are planning to use CCIP this year. Celsius is basically a company that allows you to earn interest on your cryptocurrency. The way Celsius do this is by going off, yield farming your crypto and giving you back the interest. For example, on Celsius you can earn something like 5% on your Ethereum, 5% on your Bitcoin and whatnot. Essentially, Celsius planned to use Chainlink's CCIP. 
So what Celsius are going to do is they'll be the application on top of CCIP. They will then use the programmable token bridge to actually get yield from multiple different ETH DeFi applications. So CCIP will go off and fetch some yield from Avalanche, fetch some yield from Ethereum, fetch some yield from Optimism, fetch some yield from ZK Sync, and bring all of this yield back to the main user, which is going to be very, very useful into the future. This basically means that Celsius will be using cross-chain smart contracts to get yield from a multitude of different blockchains. The next example I want to talk about is the Ethereum name service example. Essentially, if you want to register an ENS name such as maxinvest.eth, you can only do this on the Ethereum layer 1. The problem here is the Ethereum layer 1 is quite expensive. Therefore, the ENS team are using CCIP to make it so individuals can register an ENS name on the Ethereum layer 2 such as Arbitrum or Optimism or on totally different blockchains such as Solana. The way this works is that these different blockchains will be able to use the programmable token bridge to send data to the layer 1 and send this data back to the layer 2 allowing individuals to actually register an ENS name on multiple different chains. Now, and the last example that I want to discuss is how Synthetix plan to use CCIP. Essentially, this goes back to these applications having a multi-chain state synchronization. Right now, Synthetix has two different states. It has one state on the Ethereum network and one state on the Optimism network. This means that, for example, Synthetix might have a billion dollars worth of liquidity on Optimism and a billion dollars worth of liquidity on Ethereum. However, these can't interact with each other. These are also random numbers, by the way, that I've made up for the purpose of this example. Now, what Synthetix are basically planning to do is Synthetix are actually planning to make it so that these have a single state. So this means that Synthetix will have $2 billion worth of liquidity and someone who is using Synthetix will actually be able to choose if they want to use Optimism or if they want to use Ethereum for their fees. Basically what this is going to mean is that Synthetix will be the application that sits on top of CCIP. There'll be one single state and one single application. Because right now there are multiple different versions of Synthetix, one version on Optimism, one version on Ethereum, and we basically want to make this all the same using cross-chain smart contracts, resolving the issue of fragmented liquidity and resolving a bunch of other issues, which is going to be very important and useful going into the future. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the examples and that brings us toward the end of the video. What CCIP does is it actually enables cross-chain smart contracts, which is going to solve the fragmentation between all of these different blockchain networks and the fragmentation between Ethereum layer 2s. This is going to make it so users have a very simple interface layer and it'll actually make blockchain a lot easier for individuals to use. Of course, every time the programmable token bridge is being used, somebody needs to pay link to a Chainlink Oracle node, which adds more and more value to the Chainlink network over the long term, which is going to be very helpful for Chainlink. And I do think that this has a chance of becoming one of Chainlink's biggest services because of how much it can actually do. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching the video.